Hello, 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 and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast. I'm Dane Hennon. Across from me, Levi Gates. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is not a main show. This no. is a detox cast. Yeah, nobody, you know it's just happens? you and me here. Well, it's just just the two of us hanging out. I feel like the audience is looking at us like there's something. It's just you and me. Yeah, you know? we're just here hanging out, enjoying ourselves. But this time I brought some friends with me. Oh, they're just watching. I don't know if they're going to hang oh, out or okay. talk. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, they they uh, they came all this way just to do this podcast. Wow. That's true. Literally, they are not here for any other reason. Just this podcast. You believe that? Impressive, yep. right? Wow. But we got longtime fan of the show, Mr. Lars. Hi guys. He's from Lars the, from Colorlock. From they're from Colorlock. And Germany. Yeah. Ram. Ram. From Colorlock. <laughs> the Hello. boys came all the way. Ram flew all the way from London. Lars flew from Hamburg. So, uh, international Just to come to Boise, just to hang out show. with us. No, I'm kidding. They, they have <laughs> circumnavigated the United States this week. Uh, you guys were telling me last night when I picked you up, you flew... Well, everywhere, so basically. We've had, we've like had a very interesting week. I yeah. think uh, we flew in. Um, so I flew in from, from Heathrow uh, to Atlanta and then to Denver. Um, mm. Stayed in Denver for the night and uh, met Lars up on Sunday last mm -hmm. week when he flew in from Frankfurt. And um, since then, um, it's just been a roller coaster ride. Pretty <laughs> much, <you know>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've had we've had a very busy week, but I think it's been it's been very very good as well because so from from Denver we flew into Phoenix um, where we had a training organized at Distinct Detail Scott Nichols nice. we had some training planned there um, we had a group of about six seven guys who'd signed up for training so yeah. we um, I mean this was really our first your first first well it's it's our third training in the US technically yeah. but first group of people yeah the first we've group of people detailing people so I did yeah before of course, that's true yeah detailing trainings people. I did before a lot of trainings with the OEMs, no? Yeah. The German brands, OEMs, what you have here in the US, but this was the first. Yeah. So we. With um, detailers and it was great. Yeah. So we, we had that, which was mm -hmm. really, really good. Um, two days of, of, of um, you know, constant training um, in Phoenix. And then um, we had planned, um, we really wanted to go see Matt at Obsessed Garage. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd had that planned. Um, but then. In the background, as as we were doing the training, we were hearing stories about this hurricane and the storm <laughs> that's possibly yeah. going to hit. And Hello, Dorian. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, so it was going so slow. <laughs> it was. It, it was, was like excruciating. Every, you're like, you're gonna hit, it's going to hit tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to hit tomorrow. It's going to hit tomorrow. It's going to hit tomorrow. We like, just went, yeah, it was moving at the pace of a snail, really. Yeah. And we didn't know quite what was going on. Um, one day, I think, when I, when I looked up at the news, it, it, it said that, you know, pretty much all of Orlando is going to be closed yeah, yeah, and it did happen as well the airport I think they, they've this this was the first time that they'd shot they'd ever shot the uh, uh, the airport before mm. yeah, yeah. The first time that they shot the Orlando airport. that's what the lady told wow. us at the airport so um, so yeah we, we were a bit nervous we weren't quite sure what we we're gonna do an extra couple of days in Phoenix <coughs> or what or you know maybe just drive up here earlier we, we didn't know we yeah. didn't know yeah so we were just gonna play played by the year and see how it goes on and then all of a sudden uh tuesday afternoon as we were going through the training lars got an email saying that because we were meant to fly from phoenix to houston and, and then houston. connect uh on from houston to to orlando so our houston orlando flight got cancelled right <laughs> yeah so lars got the notification and then we were like okay it's happened. We we're we were we it. were expecting. Yeah. Oh, great. You know, we'd sort of mentally prepared ourselves for it. So when it did happen, we were like, okay. Well, we were a bit sad, but we were like, okay. But then, lo and behold, twenty twenty minutes later, they booked us onto another flight, um, uh, which meant that we could still go to Orlando. But <laughs> yeah. instead of flying from Phoenix to Houston, they put us onto Phoenix to Newark. Oh, <laughs> we crossed the whole. Oh, that's, we, we crossed. You guys are crossing all of the states. They had all four corners. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so we ended up um, going from Phoenix to uh, from Phoenix to Newark. Stayed there for um, two or three hours. Yeah, two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half, three hours or whatever, and then and then sort of flew backwards. Newark to, to Orlando. Newark to to Orlando. So we were meant to get there at three. We got there at um, I think half past eight in the evening yeah and um so we'd, we'd booked a place 
close to um, Matt's, obsessed. To, yep. close mm-hmm. to Obsessed, because we didn't want to be late in the morning yeah. or whatever. So so that was an hour's, an hour's drive. Yeah, so we it picked is up a, our rental car, drove drove there. Yeah, it is a bit of a bit of a trek yeah. from, from Orlando. So then Orlando spent the morning with Obsessed Garage yesterday morning. Yeah. Yeah, which was... Which was, I mean, which was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I've, I've spoken to Matt many times. I've, I've heard of him from other people. But to, but to really meet him Well, it's him different when you're it. actually talking to him, though, you know? It, it, it's, it's a cool experience, and he's very, you know, He's so crazy focused. Yeah. yeah. It's very <clears throat> impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't meet a lot of people like him who is very so concentrated oh. and so on the yeah. point. He'll lock on to something. Um, and, yeah. yeah, very impressive. So it's um, very nice. Yeah, we, both, we both came out of there thinking like, wow, what an impressive Four or five hours was very, yeah. was very impressive. Yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. And we did a video, how to clean. So he bought an M5. Nice. Yeah. He, he, he recently, get a, he yeah, recently got an M5, and, and I think this was this were his own words. He said, "There's a bit of a grandpa car, but I want to I want to turn it around, <laughs> right?" So that's what he's he's in the in the middle of doing all of that. It's like you know, it's like, like a silver things. M5, right? That's that, it. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he bought for I, w- I was gonna say, there's probably at least a chunk of people listening to us right now who don't know anything about color lock. They don't know mm. what you guys do, who you are. Oh. So we want to kind of fill them in before we go too deep into this. Just explain for the folks at home what it is color lock does. Yeah, so we are a producer of laser care and laser repair products. So we have a full range of around about 350 products. Everything is created and founded by ourselves. So we have a lab, we have a group who creates these products, and we produce everything in Germany. So of course there's some... Um, on-site products or so a, a, a brush or a tool sure. or something what yeah. we what we buy from other producers and l- label it or whatever but all the liquids we produce by ourselves so um yeah the company is founded by a new zealand guy mm-hmm. so he starts also around 35 years ago in, Wa- in wellington with his company what calls at this time european leather care um, sounds good for New Zealand people. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 that was a reason. But he fell in love to a German woman, and she wants to move back to Germany. So he moves 24 years ago back to Germany and starts there with a the company Lederzentrum. What means uh, leather center? What is in the German wording? It feels like an institute of leather. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So it's yeah. a good name for the German language area. And um, but he took also this brand Colorlock with him. Um, what he already used in in New Zealand and um, so we uh, still have this so we are the leader centrum producing color lock products Mm. that is uh, the background so then we start 24 years ago more or less concentrating on restoring repairing and um, yeah now we are um, I think one of the leader companies about leather repair we supply or support every OEM, but but you know more and less. We supply the, the car suppliers also, and um, we we have um, furniture industry uh, end customers, vintage cars. What is a big thing in, in in Europe, especially in Germany? Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a big thing, and yeah, we have now 40 employees. Wow. Um, all over 25 distributors, um, care for 75 countries, and. Um, yeah, we are a bit raw on the U.S. market, so that is something what we want to change. Right. Yeah, so we start with RAM two and a half, three years ago with, with online sailing, and uh, yeah, we really feel the fire that is, uh, <laughs> that is our market. Yeah. Yeah, we love it to be here also, but um, I, I think our products... Um, yeah, they've yeah. been well received so far. Yeah. I think uh, you know we we started selling online roughly about two and a half three years ago, um, and as with anything, you know, uh, coming across the pond is always a bit of a challenge, a, a challenge <laughs> right? I th- I, I, is it fair to say is it, it is that how it is on both sides, um, or there's, is it more there's, perhaps I, more for people um, us oftentimes from mistake popularity in their own country for this is going to be popular everywhere, everywhere, and they don't realize yeah. that. You go to a different country, the culture is different. They're going to want different things out of the products they yeah, use. And it. it's not always as simple, well, everybody likes a well, you know, shiny car or whatever. It, there's nuance to it. And well, I think and a then, lot of people miss that. Well, and like we were talking at breakfast, you know, it's, there's, uh, there's cultural differences in the automobile anyway. Mm-hmm. And people treat them differently. Yeah. yeah. And the appliance so, versus the toy versus right. the, yeah. Yeah. And so 
Uh, one thing that we noticed for us when we started going overseas was our packaging. Mm. We don't do packaging short of what we do for Amazon. It's a cardboard box um, with a plastic bag in it. Yeah, like yeah. it's that's like there you go. But like uh, you know, Rag Company Europe, one of their big things was like, we need customers to know that it came from us. We need a package of some sort for it to go overseas. And the, for us, we were like, as Americans, we look at it and go, no, that's a waste of money. Yeah. Well, an American all looks at it and goes, like, oh, they spend as much on this packaging as they did on producing the actual product. So in yeah. their mind, a lot of time, and this isn't all Americans, I'm not trying to paint with a broad brush, but yeah. there's there's a good chunk of the, the populace here that looks yeah. at something and goes, Oh, they could have spent, you know, the money they spent on this fancy labeling and all this stuff and making a better product, but instead mm. they chose to split yeah. it up. Or other times people are drawn in by packaging and then underwhelmed by the actual Absolutely, product. So yeah. it's finding that balance <clears throat> yeah. and, and just knowing your audience. So like yeah. that, that, but that was one of the things we had to figure out and something we, you know, yeah. thankfully Drag Company Europe figured it out very well. Yeah. And they do a really great job of it. Where yeah. us, we can... We package everything nicely, but we you buy from ragcompany.com. The team packs it, puts it in a bag. But to a lot of people, it's it charming. You, and it's, it's very well put together, but it's not anything fancy. It's just a very well put yeah, together box shipping. packed by somebody with love and sent out. And that's yeah. that. Yeah. But they, they wanted something branded. So yeah. for us, it was just trying to learn that. And, and it's just part of... I guess doing business in this global market is you just you got to learn that stuff. And, you've and so adapt, you yeah. guys have had a very good because one of the things that's supported you is like you said the OEM stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most people don't realize that ColorLock is used in all the major German manufacturers yeah. of automobiles. If you're thinking of it, it's probably well, used and, there. Well, <laughs> and a lot of people don't understand is, you know, seats got to go in a car. Yeah. That seat could easily be scratched. Yep. During, yeah. the, during the installation process, yeah. 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 while it's being built, an yeah. accident could happen. Yeah, and also the, the the dashboard, the center, yeah. the yeah. anything yeah, that has parts. leather or any kind of leather type yeah, we, product. No, we, 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 we care not just for leather, so um, we, we help also to, to, to repair and care vinyl and mm. also plastic parts. And um, it is more and more common that the dashboard is not um, covered up with real leather, so you will find TPO, vinyl, or a lot of new yeah. synthetic things. I was going to say, you guys do stuff <coughs> like synthetic suede, Alcantara-type stuff, of that course. as well. Yeah, yeah. That's it. of course, yeah. And that's also the main thing, what they have. So they have, in, in the car industry, especially by the OEMs, of course, when I when I go to a seat producer, Lea or Forsia or Yang Feng, of course, then they just have scratches on the seat or have sure. some damages on the seat. But um, when I go to, to, to a car producer or to the finally producer, so BMW and Spartanburg, for example, yeah, then they have more scratches and damages on the dashboard or on mm -hmm. the center. So it's mostly <laughs> the same areas all the time. Parts are getting yeah. placed and they may cross paths. Something may scratch. Well, it might yeah. fall on the yeah. ground. It's a cost-effective solution. Yeah, something yeah. gets yeah. dropped. Yeah. 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 It's an extremely cost-effective solution for all of these guys. Yeah, when you yeah, can do it on the spot. You know, the dashboard yeah. is the first thing. So they have the chassis and the dashboard is the first thing what the robot puts inside of the car. Right. And everything else comes behind. Yeah. So... There's a lot of things what coming inside of the car who can make a damage on the dashboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the center comes, the carpet comes, the roofs comes. Yeah. The seats, everything yeah. comes later in the car. So um, there's a big risk to get a damage on on the dashboard, and that is um, and to yeah, break down the dashboard or put it out, put a mm -hmm. new one inside, is a lot of um, costs a lot of money. Yeah. A lot yeah. of money. Just this plus. The dashboard and what is also very uh, expensive is you know a lot of dashboards are when they're inside so a naked dashboard is not so expensive but when you have a, a ready car that's finished yeah, yeah. And there's a dashboard where everything is glued inside they not have just a naked dashboard they have all the electricity and everything what is yeah. inside they doesn't can put it out and put it in another brand new car yeah. because it is used and it is broken maybe yeah, because everything they, on the yeah. glue it's not everything. everything is with a with a screw it's yeah. a, a lot of things also gluing in the car industry they work a lot of things with glue and yeah so, so they can't um, pull that dashboard out they have they can't just replace it they, they have to repair they can, it. They, they, can, can, they can, but, but, what it, they but think it needs four to six hours. Yeah. yeah. So when you say, okay, that is, uh, do you say labor cost? Is yeah, labor yeah. cost. Yeah. So labor cost, 80 bucks an hour, yeah. for example. So um, four times, six times, plus the dashboard with all the electricity and then and, and you are 
quickly by a big amount and one one big thing is also they are late with delivery yeah mm -hmm. right so and that cost even also more. even yeah. more so oh. that's a big amount so they can do a repair with our stuff in a half an hour 45 minutes independent how good the skills are from the guy is yeah yeah and then it's done they can deliver on time they don't have to change and um yeah but the biggest thing was the hardest thing for a producer like us is um to get all the certificates mm -hmm. yeah it's a very long and hard process and there's really um yeah Maybe uh, I can't explain it. I think it's a time consuming. In there are more regulations that ensure. Well, not that just you're Germany. There's regulations. I think everywhere, but it's no. Everybody follows this. Yeah. So we have this VDA mm -hmm. um, come together from from the car producers and um, also the US brands, GMC and mm -hmm. also um, and the Japanese follow more or less this kind of rules. So there's a big agreement, a global agreement, mm. and um, to get a certificate. So we have also for for American producers or for Japanese producer mm -hmm. um, certificates for our products. And it's the same, it's the same rules. It's yeah, I think uh, the other thing is, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Lars, is that back in the day, um, let's say 25, 30 years ago, the technology, leather repair technology, wasn't no, as, wasn't there, as yeah. good. So the products that were out there in the market, they just weren't efficient enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that has changed, you know, um, with more leather being used in, in cars, yeah, yeah. in automotive uh, industry. The technology has evolved and, and gotten better as well. Because well, in your head, you're thinking of like leather repair. You're thinking of like the the older upholstery shop down the street in a village or a town or something. It's very yeah. old school and the way yeah. they handle things. Yeah. And there's a nostalgia to it. But as far as like a modern approach you're not necessarily thinking of that if you're somebody who's not involved in the industry just the, the yeah. classic idea of who it is is repairing your leather yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, a, there's an extent to to what you can repair and what right. you should be repairing mm -hmm. i'm impressed uh, with what i've seen come out of your guys's yeah, <laughs> yeah, demos yeah, yeah. And yeah. Stuff. it's crazy so, so no, but it's a but the very good thing is so it, it's around about 20 years ago yeah. when when mercedes called us and um <laughs> i don't want to tell the whole story but that was <laughs> It was the 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 main manager of this plant in Bremen. He was also a fan of vintage cars, and they okay. met us. He met us so 22, 21 years ago on a vintage car show, and then he called us and say, are, are "You can repair old leather. What is about new leather? Yeah? Because I have some cars. I, I have to um, delivery on Monday. It was a Tuesday. He called, so yeah. I have to delivery on Monday. So." Um, because How I can you improve that? Can you, yeah. can you help it? So, okay, then I will do a bit shorter this story. But um, um, the so we did this, <laughs> yeah, with uh, with all this complication. What you can think about <laughs> it so <laughs> was not easy to handle it. And um, after this, he saw, okay, I can save so much money when I put this system in the production. So he started to to implement. Um, implement that Im in implant the it in the production yeah and and it was you know it was the second biggest um, plan from from mercedes um, so the biggest one is in the headquarter in sindelfing mm -hmm. close to stuttgart yeah. and bremen is the second biggest what is even big because 40 14 one four thousand people wow. are walking there so it's Holy a big cow, plan yeah. but it's That's just a, <laughs> but it's just the <laughs> second biggest no? yeah <laughs> <laughs> so number two. Yeah. yeah it's just number two <laughs> And um, so they start, and then comes a uh, audit from the from the headquarter, and they say, "Oh, what are you doing there? Yeah, I I repair this. Ah, okay, is is it is it good enough, or is it, <laughs> is it does it make sense? Is it approved, and yeah, uh, yeah. who who allows this? And yeah, yeah, well, I save money. No? Yeah, that's fine. But is it approved again? So they stopped all mm. of this. So around about nineteen years ago, and um, then our luck was that. Uh, manager of the plant was fighting for us and say you know we need this we spent uh, we we save so much money terrible money a million mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. when we do this job and everything works very well so then we have to pass all the tests mm. it takes a year now we know how the rules work so we need now when we have a new product we need around about six to seven months to pass all the tests okay yeah so there's a lot of that there's a lot of R&D that goes in because you've got to get all those certifications done yeah, yeah. for that new but product what we, what to be approved yeah. by all the major manufacturers. Absolutely, yeah. But I, w w w um, the point is why I'm telling this is 
um, all this knowledge, what we get at this time and always when we do this process to pass a test, we put it also in our products. So, yeah. you know, so and we don't produce uh, a clear code or a color for the car industry and for the detailers. Yeah, they're not right. They get the right, the, they get the, the, the exact the exactly same product, same product exactly of course. Yeah. Yeah. So um, everybody who do a repair with our product has an OEM mm -hmm. certified Result yeah. Yeah. in the end, when he follow all the all the steps and all the, you steps. Know, the, the so, training and stuff. So yeah, um, I think that. this is a big case, and um, it's also then it's water based products, all the healthy regulations, mm -hmm. the nature regulation, and everything. What we have to pass for the car industry, because they don't want a news. Well, they don't later they don't picture that. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to <laughs> use your product, fix it. And then have six it's, months it's down. It's going to be with the headaches. I've seen, course, yeah. and I've seen that. I've had guys that used to come into my shop that would do leather repair, and they would come in, and I'd go, "Hey, I need you to fix this seat and dye it." And then the customer would come back in three to six months later, and it'd all be worn off. Yeah. And yeah. It, it, the manufacturers don't want that. They That's don't the want that, especially when someone's buying a brand new car. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And they're like, uh, "It should be indistinguishable yeah. from new." It's, no, the, yeah, the yeah. repair has to be. Um, the same like brand new. Yeah, it has yeah. to be virtually yeah. invisible. Yeah. In this time, so when it's a used car and the customer come and we say we do a repair and maybe it looks not 100%, we, we always yeah, can say it's a repair, please right. understand this. Yeah. And yeah. everybody's fine yeah. with this. But right. when you buy a brand new car and <laughs> for example, a X no excuses. Exactly. X, <laughs> X5 exactly. M50, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you spend 120,000 bucks. We saw, this we saw one of those <laughs> when we were on our way down to London yeah. with Lars and Bodo. Yeah, and Lars was driving. and goes, guys, look, there's an X5. He was, and he it was, was very the new excited. Five, uh, yeah. 540 yeah. X5 that you were like, do you guys, do you guys see that? These things are badass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember we pulled in <laughs> at the convenience store. Yep. Like, yeah, but when you yeah. buy a car like this yeah. and you spend 120 or 150 thousand bucks, then you yeah. don't want no. a repair area. Yeah, you're right. not going to you know, compromise on something like that. Right? You're not going to say, oh yeah, that's just about okay. No, you want it. You don't want to know. No. Yeah, you know. In fact. I would take offense yeah. <laughs> just knowing that well, it's being fixed, which is why I think they, well, they don't want us to talk about Well, I think as detailers, like, we all have that eye. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, and we've all seen when new cars are delivered and panels are repainted and the car's brand new with no miles and yeah. there's been damage either through transport or <laughs> like whatever. Like, panels fixed are different them. colors. How does <laughs> yeah, no, and there are. Or there's orange peel in the paint, like, horrific oh, orange peel. A lot peel. of orange yeah. paint, yeah. And, it, and it's the same thing on interiors. There, I've seen cars that have come in that... Certain companies just did a quick repair. It's like, whoa, that doesn't match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a brand new car. Holy cow! So yeah. other, I think other people are blinded by that new car. They are. They don't. They don't see that, it. Just that whole experience of like, it's new. It couldn't possibly be, you know, a Harlequin, you know, stitched together Frankenstein yeah, yeah, yeah. of different. You no, know, but the stuff what's cool on. about your guys' stuff though is that it's s seamless. Yeah, that's what's so amazing. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's flawless. Invisible. I mean, we always say that. Despite the products and everything that we've got, a lot of it is down to the skill mm -hmm. of the person who, of who does it. Of course, you know, pretty much 50, 60 percent is down to the product, but, you know, a, a good chunk of it is, is down to it's, it's how it's done. It's the same, I'm, I'm sure, with, when it comes to detailing as well. Right? Yeah. yeah, the products you know? will get you there, yeah. but it's the but skill of the person. DA yeah. and you, could, of, you, you know, could use, doing all quote unquote, like. worse products. It's just going to take you longer or something. If you have the right skill set, that kind of evens the odds in a lot of cases. Yeah. So. Yeah. so with the training and stuff that we provide, it's um, we, we encourage people to look at it as an introduction. You know, yeah. it's a two day intensive mm -hmm. training. That's how we structure most of it, but it's still an introduction in many ways. And the biggest thing that most people have to do, or we recommend they do, is if they're serious about do, doing this and being able to offer this as a service, to go back and practice, Yeah. you know, and practice immediately. Don't leave it, you know, a month before you pick up a seat and, and do something. Yeah. So Hence the trainings you guys are doing. The and stuff. So well, and what's and, fun yeah. about these guys too is like uh, the trainings are done on junkyard seats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, no, anybody, I mean, anybody can do this and you can pick up junkyard seats just oh. as cheap as you can get hoods. All day long. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize there's a lot out there that you can play with. And, oh, and seriously, like you said, you can do the training and then go get yourself a junkyard seat, a couple yeah. of them, and yeah. then practice. Yeah. Start working, try yeah. and do different things. I mean, most things. times when we do training, we actually tell people, if you can get one for the training, then even better. Because then, you know, you can be working on it during the training and, and then, then you've got you've already got something to take back with you and right. just carry on working on it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yep. Right? So yeah, and a lot of people don't realize that or don't understand that. And it's the same thing we preach with polishing. Grab a junkyard hood. Mm. So much you can do with that. Well, and yeah, it's and, and people don't understand that that's what the junkyard's for. I used to go there and find wheels and different wheels and and stuff totally. to to show people yeah. how to clean them. This way yeah. I wasn't messing up some customer's car. Yeah. I just had a yeah. wheel and taught yeah. guys how to polish and But if you're mostly like dealing with people with used vehicles, that's going to be one of your best selling tools is just being able to show people, here's an example of a used thing. I didn't artificially age this or put fake patina on it or, you know, get a new thing and just wear it down somewhat. I actually found something that had been used, abused, left over, and now it was in a junkyard. And I still managed it. to yeah. fix yeah, yeah. it. What do you think oh. of that? And everybody loves 50-50s. Oh, everybody yeah. loves 50-50s. Yeah. Yeah. That is a global thing. Yeah. yeah. Around <laughs> the world. Oh, it's no, it, across it the pond or wherever everybody you are. Yeah. Everyone loves it. Everybody's like a before and after. All right. All right. Yeah. There's some endorphins going off or yeah. something. Well, and at the, <laughs> their SEMA booth, that's what they had. Yeah. Was that yeah. was a 50 50 of yeah. a street right well, there. And, and how effective was that? You guys had a bunch of people coming through who were just we looking did. at it and amazed at what you were able to accomplish. Yeah. I mean, so SEMA was a whole new thing for us. Well, you know, we were. <laughs> well, there you are. Yeah. I'm representing SEMA. So, no, I think we were. We've been, you know, I think the first year when, when I came in. You uh, both so you came. Guys, we both came. Now, one, thing, guys. one thing maybe before, so when oh, yeah. Th yeah. other people don't travel so much like we both or I do. Yeah. So I do, you know, I visit all our 25 distributors around yeah. the world and I help them on shows. So I yeah. I was in Japan on a show or in China on a show, in Malaysia, or in you're all over. Uh, in every country in Europe. And, and you're the managing partner. And, 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 yeah. You're one of the bosses. I'm one of the bosses. He's yeah. the boss yeah. man. <laughs> uh, but, I, but that I, says I, a lot about the I company. Own, yeah. So I own, I own the half yeah. of the company and uh, Matthias. But is, your boots on the ground. You're actually yeah. going there, going so to as places. A, yeah, as, as an owner, though, you are. Yeah, but this is supporting your distributors in events and this shows. This is my that matters. my way how I do it, and this is how I want to. I want to be close by the people. I want to know yeah. what they really want, and I want to take all this information in our products, and you know, so. Um, I, of course, I have to earn money and yeah, make business. Of course, but I want to to do it on a on a on a good way. I will sell yeah. things what people really need. Yeah, yeah. It's the same not for just, the people who But use then you products. also, but you are also that boots yeah. on the ground in the sense that you get to talk to customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get to be that guy, even if you have forty employees and you're in <laughs> there's not twenty five distributors in seventy five countries. <laughs> You've made, um, you've been to every single one where you can be the guy that is the first point of contact. You can shake the hands. The same with which Bar, is so very like rare. same with Ram. Like that makes a big difference to a lot of. That's why Jeff flies with us to some of the events just so he can be there because people are yeah. like, I can't believe you own the company. You know, I thought mm. it was Levi that ran it, and people are like, no. Then and they go, well, I know Dane's dad owns the company. And then they see him and they're like, oh my gosh. But it's <laughs> what do they think of your son or something? <laughs> yeah, they think that Dane's Dane's my son. Like, but they, but it's it, it is. Know that no, it's but it, I get that a lot. Is I get a lot of people go, oh, I thought you were the boss. I'm like, no, that's Jeff. And they're like, he's here. Holy cow! Like, mm, okay. So that it's a good thing. I think a lot of people like knowing that, okay, that yeah, the boss is there you. because. Yeah. Uh, I figure that translates. It no translates matter the culture. Everybody respects that. Everybody respects yeah. it, and it translates that you care about your customers. Well, you have the the only thing in the Asia area is that the people really don't uh, trust me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, that, I'm, that I'm the that I'm the owner. Yeah, you know? yeah they're like, they, I don't believe uh, you. He wouldn't be uh, here. So yeah, <laughs> are you not? Yeah. <laughs> well, you, know, what not, you, didn't hear not, you don't have enough confidence in your product you, that you can't you, just follow have, it everywhere have, it goes. You have dirty things with leather color on yeah. it. And <laughs> you brush here and you're uh, sweating, yeah? especially in, so in Bangkok. Never yeah, it's hot. Yeah. You, don't you're screw you're this sweating. Up. Don't screw this. You, yeah. you can't be the you can't be the boss. No. Yeah. So, that is the only difference, you yeah, know. Yeah, so yeah, Asian yeah. people don't <laughs> don't think that I'm but that I'm the, true. The okay. great benefit of that is when when interesting issues or questions do come up. You're present. You're able to witness it. And hey, if you don't have an answer, you're going to find it out. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. great. I yeah. mean, there, there's a lot of places where there's too much separation between yeah. you know people in charge and people actually using the product. Okay. So, yeah. No, that that really makes a difference. Yeah. So, but what I want to say about SEMA is, um, in compare to all other shows, so we have also Auto Mechanica in Frankfurt, what is a big thing. Yeah. And yeah. a good show. Yeah. And um, all this vintage car shows what I do, and um, but SEMA is really unique. It's mm -hmm. it's very impressive, and it's uh, yeah. 
It's a. It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so a, it's an amazing show, and it's a yeah. good reason to fly to Vegas. No? Yeah. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Just think, if ever there <laughs> was a better excuse, <laughs> this was it. This was Sorry, it. Sorry, I have right? to work. I have to yeah. work. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's oh, a lot of people find it hard. Just, it's just, oh, no, it's just business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but, but it was. But what, it show, was two years ago. Show is very. Three, three this will be ago? the third. It was two years ago. Yeah, two years First ago year you when guys stopped by. Yeah, we just said, look, let's just jump on the plane and let's let's just check out the show, see what it is. We'd heard so much about it, and we said, okay, this, you know, it doesn't make sense to yeah. you know have a booth there straight away, but we'll just fly. Well, this is what I what I always do. So when uh, yeah. when it's a show, when I hear from this, it's new. I always. Just go, go for out. a visitor, yeah. check it out, and um, yeah, but after the first day, it was clear. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think we'd... Well, what I love <laughs> is this concentration. Oh, no, so, yeah. You know, so... Um, that many buyers, 160,000. There's no... There's nearly no people who's just walking around and do a, a free time. Yeah. No, it's, it's industry it's very, only. It's, yeah. Yeah. But the only people who aren't there to buy something are just media people going around taking pictures or video of the whole stuff, which is a promotion for anybody who happens to end up in the pictures. But otherwise, yeah, it's all people who could be there to buy your product. Yeah. They just don't know. Yeah, they're yet. buyers. And that's the most yeah. amazing thing is yeah. that they're, everybody there needs a product yeah. regardless. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They need something. Yeah, yeah. but the scale at which, it's, which, which the whole thing yeah. happens. It's 160,000 badges. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's that are a lot. vetted, vetted lot. buyer badges. But the funny crazy. thing was, the first year when we were when we were walking around, uh, <laughs> I think we we did day one and we did day two, and we were just walking, right? We were just yeah. taking it How all. How far in. did and you we make it? <laughs> we did, and we thought, um, oh, I think we've seen it all. Yeah, no, there's, oh. there's not much. After no. two not days, much after, after two about days, two days. Yeah. and then on day th and um, towards the end of day two, we were like, okay, I think we've just got that one haul more to do, which we can do tomorrow. And we've got two more days left, so we can do the whole thing again. Um, and then we came in on the third day, and then all of a sudden we entered this other area that we'd never even explored. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and that led us to another hole, another yeah. level, and then I a tent, a free area. Yeah. Yeah. And then I called <laughs> Levi and was like, "Where are you?" Uh, and he said, oh, we're at the tent at the back. I said, tent? What tent are you talking about? And then <laughs> yeah. that's when, like, Here, this whole new, we got like introduced in this whole new area. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that was just overwhelming for us. But that, I mean, at the end of that yeah. trip, you know, we, we booked the booth for the full-in year at SEMA um, at Vegas Airport before we jumped on the plane. Yeah. Smart. Right? So we just... <laughs> Got yeah, it, right got when it, they make them available. Got a coffee was, yeah. Exactly, right. So we just went and did it straight away. Um, yeah. That's how clear it was. Yep. And us. then yeah. uh, last year, that was your guys' first year. Yep. And yeah. fun, they got to book their booth. They put their booth right behind ours. Yeah. Which was, was cool. super awesome because we struck, a, Ram and I struck up a friendship. Lars and I struck up a friendship with that. And then I went over to Waxstock with your dad that last year. Yeah. So we got to hang out with Ram again mm -hmm. and see him. And then in... Uh, then we got to spend SEMA together, yeah. which was, yeah. awesome. was awesome. We had a blast Absolutely. with Bodo and yeah. Yolka and <laughs> the, the four of us. It was just great. And then, or the four of you guys with us was awesome. We I had a blast. Said, there was a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of us. But it was it was just super fun to have have you guys there for that whole week and be able to spend that week with you guys. And then uh, same for us. Yeah, same for us. I mean, Absolutely. and then November we ended, and then it was first week of february we were all in atlanta together for the serum summit yeah, yeah. that was even more fun and we were like oh my gosh yes ram's here <laughs> like and then lars is coming yeah like no seriously so meet these guys these guys are cool they're they're, they're are super fun just fun to talk yeah about. and yeah, then so, oh my so God. it was great it's hard to be humble with all this <laughs> praise that you're well, it was, it, 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 people don't like <laughs> we, i was thinking making about it you very, very i was hard. thinking about I'm it walk i was out just, of that room with my chest i was just thinking about yeah yeah we'll start signing autographs for everyone <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, but it was, I was thinking about it last night and I was telling my wife this, like, I love, like, you know, one of the things I love about my job is the fact that I get to meet folks like yourselves, mm. but not only that, but you get to be my friends Fantastic, and yeah. we get to be friends Thank and you. then we get to go on trips together. Yeah. And that's what's so wild. Like we all got to experience Atlanta together in the Serum Summit, yeah. which was super fun. Which we got great, to yeah. experience Vegas together. And then, you know, then we went to the UK and we went to Waxstock, 
we hung out there and then Lars and Bodo drove us back down to London. And then we all went and did London touristy stuff that night yeah. together. <laughs> and Ram was there on a phone. He wasn't physically yeah. present, but he yeah. was there on a video. But phone then we, just... but then the next <laughs> day, let's not share details. <laughs> yeah. <of> that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got donuts. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We yeah, got donuts. Let's put it that way. We got donuts <laughs> that night. Yeah. Uh, I did. I did a. a I called Lars um, on his phone. You know, we were chatting, and then. For, uh, he couldn't pick up and then he did a video call yeah. and by this time I was I was in my bed because yeah. I had a long two days <laughs> yeah. you know and then all of a sudden there's like 10 of you around there part we're of like, the call hey. <laughs> lying. In my bed, well, we're like, like we're eating well. donuts we're wandering around London <laughs> yeah. what are you doing yeah. sleeping like, uh, I was going to go to but sleep but then yeah. but then it was great because then the next day we all got to go have lunch in your neighborhood mm -hmm. yeah and and go have lunch grab some ice cream we went and hung out on the river like that it was, was just great. it was so much fun and i look at yeah. that and go like this is this is what i love about our industry now yeah and the fact that we all work for different companies but we're all friends and we all get to hang out together yeah. and that's yeah. one of the things that we really try to foster here at the rag company and something that we really try to do and i'm super excited because Community. this year again color lock is next to us at the uh, at sema and yeah. we get to spend another week together for yes. that and yeah. then yeah. No, we are so happy that yeah. it works. No? Because yeah, and then the two of get you get the booth and SEMA on this place where you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And this is the fun. Thing. Thing. I'm sure <laughs> you guys <laughs> heard this on the other podcasts. Ooh. But Ram and Lars are staying five doors down from my house. <laughs> <laughs> How so did that? <laughs> Lars told me, "Hey, we're coming to Boise. We're going to spend a couple of days with you." I was like, "Perfect. That sounds great." He said, "I got the tickets. Ram will get the accommodation." So I gave Ram a list of some hotels that we use and they Being were all tight booked. as i am i <laughs> they're booked and expensive uh, but, uh, is out here. Uh, but, so he goes i think i'll find an airbnb and i said okay stay in this area because it's easy for me he to said pick you downtown up. he said he said oh. stay in downtown downtown or, or northwest boise because yeah. downtown north is boise. on his way to work he passes yeah. through downtown because he's on the other side of town from where That's say it. like anthony and i live yeah, yeah. way out that way yeah <laughs> so it was i think it was one of, one of the afternoons when i was trying to yeah book and airbnb and everything that was coming up um, coming up in in downtown just just didn't look quite right or yeah. you know it, it just didn't feel right and then all of a sudden i i came across this nice beautiful place but it was just southeast boise mm -hmm. and i was yeah. thinking okay I, I'm, I'm not too sure but then i checked it's only a 10 minute drive so i said fine yeah, I'll, no, I'll, I'll book shouldn't it be a boise problem. is not that Egg Big. Uh, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that and i said okay well i'll, I'll book it and I'll, i just you know i'll just tell levi that look don't bother picking us up or anything because you know it's, we're getting in quite late yeah, sure. you know it's not downtown Sends me the address. It, and then send him the address and then <laughs> he's calling me um uh, and this was i think on an afternoon when i was yeah. looking after my 20 month old son he was crying so i couldn't quite pick up yeah and i rang him back and then um and that's when you told me that yeah, i was like, like shut up that place is on my street wow. right? five <laughs> doors down from <laughs> my house i'm gonna walk by it tonight when i take my kids like what are the i chances? know the owners what i didn't know chances? it was an airbnb oh my <laughs> oh, gosh right. and it worked out uh and it's perfect so last night i went and picked him up <laughs> from the airport and just drove back to my house but Easy. i drove down the street a little bit dropped him off and then drove back up to my house and i was it was fine then this morning drove down picked him up Easy. Yeah. it was perfect yeah. Yeah. so um but the only problem was we had a horrific storm last night that mm. broke a number of trees in our neighborhood. Ooh. A number mm. of them knocked the power out. So huh. yeah, when even. I dropped them off, their Airbnb, Anne came out, the lady that owns the house, and said, sorry, guys, the power's out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they had flashlights was oh, in yeah. the bathroom. And, Little and did you like, know that uh, your Airbnb would actually be camping. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. but glamping. But they glamping. Said, That's yeah, what they got. Yeah, glamping. Glamping. They said the beds, are, beds are comfortable. The, the shower had great pressure. So It was um, just very cold. Tonight, tonight it should have, uh, the power should be hooked back up. Mm. Yeah. Um, so... Bless her. She's, I she's, got the rain. I didn't get really like nice apparently a heavy storm. It was just kind of all the trees oh, really? at Timberline are yeah. broken in half. Jeez. Okay. There was a tree down there. There, there was a tree. There was a pine tree down Completely. in an apartment yeah. complex yeah. on Boise well, Avenue. Okay. I yeah. got a big tree in, a, in my backyard that always makes me nervous. A big one, <laughs> about the, as around as as wide as this table. Huh. Yeah. So wow. it was a big okay. storm hit us last night, and so. Uh, well, but glad was you fun. guys are okay. So they made it, <laughs> but it was it's awesome. So to have these guys here has been Just a long time coming to have you guys here. Yeah. So we're excited yeah. to have you here. And we're going to do some stuff today. Um, Boise but Fry Company, maybe. maybe we might do some Boise Fry Company. <gasps> okay, we'll probably do the tavern tonight <laughs> Ooh, for dinner. Nice. Uh, and Bound Crossing, and then. Uh, um, but that we're going to do some videos. We're going to have some fun. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's one of those things. Like I love having you guys here. 
I like bringing people over to do this. I love that you guys are just in town and thought of us. That was sweet of you. At least, <laughs> not in town, right? but in the country. We, 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 we couldn't, the we couldn't well, have traveled so much and not not. We're, we're not in your country, easy. so we just thought we'd swing by. You know? yeah. That's it. We appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. So yeah. uh, what's the next plan for the year? Obviously, SEMA. Yeah. For, for Color Lock uh, for the U.S., what is the plan? So I think one of the first things um, was something that we did earlier this year was we we incorporated uh, an entity here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Right, that was that was step one. Um, step two is to to look at a warehousing facility here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. so that um, we can make all our products available because a majority of them are available at the moment, but there's still a a, a, a small part of our catalog which I think will do well here. Um, that that isn't available purely due to shipping constraints and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So. yeah, they're all like aerosol products, etc. Mm -hmm. So, oh, okay. so yeah. we need to we need to solve that. Um, and then it's just going to be you know we've got customers here already, as Lars said. You know we've got a lot of OEM customers, but we just want to be here, look after them. You know, uh, be available for them. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, look at look at growing and, you know. Yeah, make it make it bigger. That's yeah, so we 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 we're looking for a place and um, yeah, with office and all of this and yeah. employ people or hire people. So yeah. you say it now. And um, we have some ideas of where yeah. we're going to be yeah. or where we'd like yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah. 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 nice. Yeah. So um, yeah, and then trainings, more trainings, more training. this, and then this of next course year for twenty twenty. More, more trainings. Yeah, and we, yeah. What we what we what we do for SEMA is um, that we will offer directly dates yeah. on SEMA. Yeah. yeah. Where the people can sign up on SEMA for, for trainings, for training the country, yeah. um, mm -hmm. across the country, close after SEMA also. Yeah. So um, yeah, we've made some interesting connections with people over the last year, yeah. year and a half. So you know the guys in um, uh, you know Eric uh, and yeah, G -Tech and, and G -Tech in Atlanta. Was in, yeah. in Atlanta, you guys here, you know um, um, Phoenix, uh, you know Scott down in Phoenix, and a few other guys that we're speaking to as well. So we've got quite a few locations in various different parts of the country nicely spread out that gives us good coverage and we're hoping to just come up with dates before SEMA have yep. some brochures have it all panned out so that because one of the big things that we got last year in SEMA was the sheer when number of inquiries that we got for training like you know, when are you going to do when's the next <laughs> training when's the next training so yeah. we thought you know now that we've had that experience we don't want to go back to SEMA without having those dates mm -hmm. right sort yep. of in the diary right so if we can have that then we can just give out flyers to people and say look Come it's to our there. Trains. Here they Quite are. As many yeah. spaces. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we will do uh, mobile tech also. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Great. in Orlando. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. In Orlando. So. And I, I know that there's definitely, say, like the German OEMs, there are definitely those who are producing here in the U.S. as well. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's that's so we, we're stuff. doing so that already. That's yeah. a draw, too. Yeah, yeah. 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 so BMW in Spartanburg mm -hmm. and Volvo in. Um, also, South Carolina, close mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. sea. Uh, what this Charleston. Yeah. Charleston, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, we and W is here, who yeah. produce an Atlas. Yeah. And uh, yeah, what, we is not, what is not available in Europe for? Sure. Yeah. yeah. VW. Oh, yeah, yeah. VW. The, no, the, VW, the VW, VW Atlas. But this mo model Atlas, is no, yeah. you can't buy it in Germany. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> VW Atlas. Isn't it a... BMW X7s as well. Yeah. I was going to say the... Um, no, we call well, it you Atlas guys still is the a... Where you are. Yeah, right? but Tuareg the, Tuareg, the Tuareg is a bit smaller. It is. The it Atlas, is smaller. I think, yeah, is uh, rebadged in the UK as the Skoda Everest. Mm, which one? I think. The Atlas? The Atlas. Oh. John Hole sent me a picture of one. He goes, have you ever seen one of these? And I said, yeah, it's a Volkswagen Atlas. Well, it's interesting because Ford oh, really? makes okay. an Everest. Uh, it's, but this is called this. It's like this. But it's a Skoda. Something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So well, we no, don't this get is Skodas. A Kodiak. Yeah, so. no, so or a Kodiak. That's what it is. Oh, no, no, no. The Atlas is bigger. Yeah, but the Atlas bigger. is bigger. But Somebody my, in the my wife, is screaming my wife, right now. My I know wife the answer. <laughs> no, my wife has a, um, a Kodiak. Skoda, right? Kodiak. Yeah. So, nice. um, yeah. It's not so big like a... Uh, yeah, like it's, it's, really yeah. it's more yeah. like a... That's um, a very misleading what name. What do you say? It's Kodiak. Mid -size, I'm picturing mid -size, a very large vehicle. But the shape or the body, how it looks like, is a bit more similar like this. But the new Touareg, they get a facelift also. He's coming... Closer to American style. So okay, from, interesting. From okay, how, yeah, how it looks like. So the Touareg comes yeah. closer to the Atlas. Mm. Okay. Okay. And um, but the Atlas is still a bit, for my feeling, I don't know really the number. Maybe they are have this exact same exactly thing, yeah, same yeah. size. No? Yeah. But <laughs> it certainly didn't look like. It seems bigger. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it seems like bigger for yeah. me. Yeah. And but that um, that was uh, always kind of one of those interesting uh, things, like we talked about earlier, where you kind of have to adapt to the the culture of the country that you're you're moving into in terms of the products you offer and stuff. 
Volkswagen had to do that because they stopped selling, like, you know, the, the Touareg because it just wasn't selling. People didn't want to spend that kind of money on a Volkswagen at that point in time. Yeah. yeah. But now, okay, they kind of – they got some flack, like, when they changed yeah. the Jetta up a little bit and they cheaped it and Americanized it. Well, the yeah. people that you're kinda, staying people with – People got upset they have You us. said it, not us. Oh, hey, I, said it. Yeah. I said it. I said it. I'm no, a partner. So yeah. I, I yeah. will. I that. <laughs> but at the same time, like, I – People who like Volkswagen here are extremely passionate about yeah. it, for, for the most part. And uh, I, it's always interesting to see the moves that, you know, say, foreign manufacturers for, from the U.S., the foreign to us, the, the adaptations they make to, you know, play in our market. Mm. It's just always interesting. So the Atlas was, yeah, a newer one that came out, and that was like, well, that's a big SUV, but that's not anywhere else. So yeah. it's yeah. just interesting to see. Okay, the American audience wants three-row SUVs. Here yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 and I think they're doing they're doing well. So no, those are those are clients that we already yeah. look after. But mm -hmm. I think it's just a case of yeah, and we do also know, a bit, and uh, we we um, sell our products also to the aviation. Yeah. So Lufthansa Technik is one mm. one good partner from us. Yeah, all the air airlines and their leather. As well. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And and also, That's also, a lot of seats. Also, we <laughs> seats, yeah. and also we have the American American Airlines, Airlines or who, who, yeah. who who buy our products and do um, maintaining yeah. and mostly yeah. no so cleaning and a little bit touch up with the leather fresh. So we have a DIY product where you can refresh areas when, when mm. the color is faded or you yeah. Said. So that's something that we offer as well. So we've got obviously the training that we've been talking about. That's for professional professionals, customers. Right. Yeah, yeah, but we've got a um, DIY range as well, so something for end users, so people who can just buy the product and you know just want to restore their own car. Yeah, um, so you know, it's they just can, for themselves. Yeah, they don't need equipment. Themselves, they yeah. don't need a, a spray gun or airbrush yeah. and a compressor. Just, or it's something a lot more like this, easier so. um, for for them to do. Right. Um, and and I think if anyone's out there, we we offer a service where mm -hmm. you just email us the chassis number, send us some photos, and we'll we'll tell you. Yeah. But this kind of product, you know what products you need, etc. Yeah. There's, awesome. there's always demand for those kinds of products because people, generally speaking, are, are holding onto their vehicles longer these days. So, you know, you're going to run into more wears and tears and stuff when you do that. And if you can make it look newer, make it look better, why wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 No, that's rad. I'm excited just to see. One, I, I think my favorite thing was I like learning about stuff. It's the easiest way to describe it. Um, yeah. So... Lars and I were hanging out in the Moxie in London at our hotel when we were waiting for John and, and his wife and Dave to show up. And we were just sitting on the couch talking. You guys, were, you and Anthony were playing some ping pong. Oh, yeah. And we started talking about leather. And I was learning stuff from Lars that in my 25 years of detailing, I didn't even know. And that was just from us having a conversation. And that was so fascinating to me. And it was, we were talking about brushes yeah, I know. and the synthetic yeah. and and uh, differences hairs, between the yeah. natural, natural hairs and the synthetic yeah. hairs and that was one thing i didn't even i it, it didn't even dawn on me and that was fascinating to find out and the thing that most people don't understand is lars has been in the leather industry since you were a teenager yeah, I start with 17 to do leather repair, yeah. That's a bit of experience yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. Just a bit. But he's been in it. Like, that's all he's focused on is leather and repair and restoration and that. And so to be, you know, the head of the company and being able to, to focus on that, but still be that guy that is in the trenches, as we say, with the team, going to the events, meeting the customers, hosting trainings, that goes a long way hmm. for the industry as it, in general because you're learning from somebody that not only has that but has that skill and ram what did you do before uh look i've i've, I've been in um, party. this five years but yeah i was a buddy <laughs> party you know? party, I, I was party. <laughs> <laughs> but just five years of doing leather repair i've lost no. all my hair now yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's Crazy. what leather repair can do to you so you there's there is a now. there's a vicious side to it as well then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that people need to be aware of <laughs> But it's one of those those uh, those skills you can be really proud of, you know. Being well, it's something I never had. Well, you you can see a visual transformation. Thing. That's what most people connect to, right? Yeah. So when you've when you've done a repair, you can it's it's there for you to see what you've just achieved. Yeah. You know, and I think um, that is what gives, you know, most people who offer this as a service, and most people look out do do it for their own vehicles as well. You know, that is what gives them the the. The satisfaction and a feeling right. of pride saying that, oh well, look and you you're know. doing a task but there's there's a level of craftsmanship to it like you yeah. talked about earlier yeah. where you're like 
the tools will get you halfway there, if not maybe a little bit more than halfway, but the rest is skill. you, you got to be able to uh, be up to the challenge and, and take it on. And it's one of those things I maybe it's just like nostalgia in my head, but like leather repair, upholstery, stuff like that. That's one of those old like trades, like a, mm. a real you know skill that not everybody has, but everybody tends to respect a person who can well, you know, do that Dane, so well. Dane has a couch that he just received from his parents that is an old leather couch <laughs> yeah. that is a red leather. It's true maroon uh yeah, but like it darker is darker red but his... did you show me photos of that i think no, last time I, don't, I don't have any pictures of it uh, no, but I'm, I'm, yeah sorry it, yeah. but he it's one of those couches that your parents uh they're old school when they buy furniture they buy furniture yeah, yeah. they mm. buy real furniture yeah. they're not yeah. buying a cheap yeah, yeah not, not for three, yeah. five years no. design. They're buying something, then right. change yeah. design. something so to last. Yeah. They're buying yeah. something to last. And yeah. so they just bought a new couch. But they their other couch was perfectly good. Yeah. That they so you took it. <laughs> it's it's why I took it because I'm like, this thing is still great. It's, it's just like it's, some crow's feet on one end stuff. Because they had dogs and the dogs like to sit on one side of it. And that yeah, was, so yeah. it started but it started to get worn, but that's yeah. something that Using the color lock system, like he could work on the couch, or f- yeah. you you have access can, to it. can clean it, it just yeah, you know, clean bring it, it back to life. Re, re-dye it, yep. with leather fresh, and then and it you'll looks, almost have like a brand new sofa. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah. it looks looks good again. Yeah, no, it, it it's, a, it's yeah. a very and nice so a lot couch. Of, so I'd love to be able to recover just the little parts of it that need some help. Well, and that's one of the things that I like about the system is that it it's any leather product at that point. And so, as a detail shop, if you're a detail shop business. That is a really great feature to add yeah, is the absolutely. leather reconditioning and repair. But not only that, but once you get that customer that brings in their, their car to fix, then they're like, oh, uh, I have an old chair or I have an old couch. Can you do this? Guys, that's just another source of revenue for you. And if you can go yeah. into that customer's house maybe and fix it right there, if some of these mobile detailers have that capability, now you're going into the customer's house to fix that. They give that to their friends. Yeah. They they let the word of mouth starts to spread, and there are companies here locally, to Boise, that that's what they do. They detail yeah. cars. They go in the houses. They repair furniture, not only upholstery, but they also do the leather. They fix yeah. couches. They they do a lot of stuff, and yeah. so a lot of people don't understand the volume of that. Or like you said, airlines. Mm. Some of these detailers go in and clean clean the private jets and and other things like that, and. Yeah, the seats absolutely. get sad. Mm. Yeah. So what I think for for detailer shops, what I see around the global is um, a good thing is you get this car from a customer for maybe cleaning yeah. and bit detailing. So you spend or you have this car for six hours, yeah, mm-hmm. and you get um, one price amount of money right, for, for this, that. yeah. So and um, when when the customer brings a car and um, you do it. Then you talk with your customer and you do a check with the car. And you look inside. It's very, very easy when you look on the steering wheel. It, for sure, it will be glossy. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And he wants matte. Yeah. So another 50 bucks, for example. The car is anyhow there, you know? Yeah. Y- you, you, you can it's lift. It's a very good add-on. Yeah. Service. It's, it's a very yeah. good Already add-on. Yeah. And so every detail, you can, yeah. you can lift your price yeah. with extra yeah. service. Yeah. 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 That doesn't and take you much don't, time. And you don't have to spend... Uh, any extra on marketing or marketing or something like, like this yeah. to to get more in your so you can have then maybe six hours cleaning and another two hours for interior and you have you, you have two two super benefits so your customer will love you a bit more mm-hmm. yeah yeah because everything is cozy oh and yeah. nice inside and matte again yeah and um, you you fill your day yeah yeah with one customer Yep. And not with a second customer. Yeah. Because when the car is anyhow there, it's easy to spend two hours more yep. to get a second car well, to fit in this two hours yeah. is difficult. Yeah. And the yeah? biggest thing is a lot of a lot of other details, something that we're seeing in, 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 in the UK is a lot of our detailing customers who've who've undergone our training are actually picking up newer clients through the leather repair service yeah. and then converting them into their detailing customers right That's yeah awesome. right because right for instance someone like some someone who'd offer this service um all of a sudden you know because we offer uh, a lot of guys they can they can come and help and support them uh, help and support us at a lot of classic car shows that we go to so a few a few of the guys who've been there have have pulled up you know I've, I've, I've pulled in one or two clients who've got like a portfolio of five six seven cars and these yeah. are classic cars expensive <coughs> cars that we're talking about needed some leather repair work 
did that successfully, then told them about the other services that they offer, the detailing work and yeah, this and that. And now they're and then, uh, caring they're, for they're, collections. They're doing like maintenance details yeah. and all, all, all kinds of stuff. But they would have probably never been able to attract that customer if it not well, right. it, had it not been for the leather repair service. The right. interior yeah. is the part that the owner sees the most yeah. out of that car. They're spending all their time inside of it. Yeah. So yeah. to have something dramatically change from, oh, what they thought yeah. was, it's, it's well, been cleaned, and, and but it, it hasn't been repaired. And yeah. then to suddenly go in there and see what it's like when it's repaired, they're going to tell everybody else they know mm -hmm. about and that. And the other thing is there are, there are days. So, you know, if it's um, like the winter months when, you know, it's usually a lull period, mm -hmm. things are a bit, you know, down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of guys end up doing so much leather repairs. Like I've got, I know a detailer out in, uh, in Kent. He's got a spot that he knows there's a car there lined up that needs so much leather repair work that he could just go to anytime the weather's bad yeah. he just drives there and starts working on this car yeah right and just keeps doing his leather repair stuff well and there's one other thing that i just thought about that's kind of funny but it's basically there, there's a certain level of like no matter how nice a car someone has is whatever there are people who maybe maybe they're busy maybe not lazy but they just they go through the car wash, right? Yeah. Well, there's no automated car wash for your interior. Oh, exactly. So <laughs> they can't just go somewhere and be like, yeah. yeah, I'll just run it through the machine. Can't do that with exactly. the interior. Well, yeah. So they're going to find some other way. And if you can offer that to them and you can appeal to those people, then you well, have a new larger market. Well, yeah. and I was going to say also there is still, as much as we hate to admit, there is still a stigma on detailers. Yeah. There is still a stigma that you're just a car washer. Mm. You can't do this. You can't do that. And so being... A leather tech is another way is a raise, different yeah. trade. That's yeah. what I was saying. It's that skill and trade, that nostalgia. It's, a, it's like a it's sexy a, job. It's, well, it's a totally different. So those collectors, they may look at the the detailer and go, oh, "I've got a guy that, or I yeah, care yeah, yeah. for these myself, but I need a leather guy that can fix this specific thing." Yeah, and yeah. so Be they the come guy. in. Yeah, they come in <laughs> as an experienced technician. Yeah, yeah, in the customer's eyes. Yeah, and then that's how they're in. You know, get their Absolutely. entry Absolutely. because. That's what they need. And yeah. then they go, well, they I can come also in and They start detail. talking about, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. look at this on the outside. Yeah. Look at this. Right. And they can Once sell. that conversation starts flowing. Right. Exactly. What, then I, what I really like on this is um, that you, um, this is what you do for the customer. Mm -hmm. is also, so he has a problem. Yeah. You're yeah. solving it. Mm -hmm. And you're solving it. Yeah. So um, yeah. You, yeah. you really do, do something helpful for him you know yeah. so that is also what there's that level of satisfaction as well of what you get yeah. back from the f from your customer so it's a very really, um yeah, it's visible isn't it it's yeah. it's that yeah. you know the thankfulness that yeah, the, the, thankfulness the customer expresses things, yeah, is, is something that is really mm -hmm. able to see because well, well, that makes fun no? you know so when you when you can help a customer with a problem you fix it for him yeah. and then he will yeah He's really, really. Um, it, it, it's many steps beyond simply wiping some cleaner on, you know, some oh, yes. leather, making oh, yes, it shiny. I mean, that's yeah. Not, yeah. yeah, that no. that's something people. A lot of people feel like, ah, oh, I can do that. But when you repair the leather, they're they're gonna stand back and go, okay, I'm gonna let you handle this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, well, cool. that's that's cool. All yeah. right, guys. Well, uh, I think we it's covered a lot. Almost of Almost lunchtime. Here is almost lunch yeah, wow. <laughs> so time with that flying. said guys <laughs> feel free to plug flying. your stuff where can people find out about color lock um so um the main website that we've got is www.colorlock.com mm -hmm. um uh, we've got all the products um that we have listed on there um uh, in there you'll also find a professional tab where people go people can go in and if you're a trade customer if you're a, a a detailer um you can log in to apply for a trade account yeah. which gets you access to a lot of our videos that we've put up um professional videos access to professional products right. that was going to be my yeah. next question is yeah. where can people see examples of the work exactly so, so yeah. there's a lot of videos there access to professional products and we also offer some discounted prices for our trade customers Very you know nice. we're hoping Thanks. that you know there's there's a there's a nice little touch for the those guys in there um so yeah that's that's the main place where they can buy stuff yeah. but we're on instagram we're on facebook we're in um you know pretty much every social media yeah, uh, and, out there and, and we'll see at plus, <laughs> plus at colorlock.com ram at colorlock.com yeah, yeah, we yeah. simplify the email yeah. addresses and nice what and we easy. also have because he was talking about skills or we talk a lot about skills when you want to learn more about leather yeah. we have a we have a dictionary online mm. yeah so mm. we we put together an online um 
Wikipedia almost. Oh, uh, like a wiki. About, okay, yeah. About leather. Yeah. Right. right. This is awesome. this is a, a third party website. Right, mm-hmm. so it's not integrated with our website or anything. Nice. It's, it's so, a completely but independent. But it's something you guys. It's something put that together. we've put together. Okay. Yeah. We spent a lot of time doing it, um, and it it has everything that there is. That's around about, about 600, 650 pages. Wow! So that's, that's, that's a, a lot of. So it's not yeah. just car yeah. leather. It's yeah. um, all leather. All. Yeah. All about leather, how yeah. leather is producing, what kind of different kind of leather, what is mold, what is fat um, yeah. coming out. <laughs> you know, pictures that stuff. have been collected for years All and years and years. Stuff, and we yeah. actually yeah. get sort of now we've, various different we have questions. This German it, version is know. now 10 years old. So mm. it built up uh, the last 10 years. And um, we have one guy in the company who, who cares just for this. The nice. last wow. ten years, yeah. yeah. So, so he it. he reads all newspapers, all magazines, has contact to all the tanneries around the world, pick up all the information, and also we have a system that all these pictures, what is maybe interesting for this, what we get mm-hmm. by email or whatever, um, it goes true to him. We ask customers, can we use it for the website? Yeah, you can use it, and so um, it's really packed on yeah. information so when you want to go <laughs> where <laughs> well, you want to dive down that <laughs> rabbit hole about leather care, <laughs> no, that's where no, you but go. you know our, our slogan in german is wir verstehen leder what means we understood leather what is mm-hmm. sounding in the sermon language um we are happy when somebody asks us and we can share yeah and that is also uh, really one main thing from us um, and it's also how you work in uk and, yeah. the, and we how, how want we to work in the in, in the u.s um we will give all the information and everything what coming together in our place yeah. because we get all the OEMs, aviation, furniture, fashion, shoes, producer. Also, we have <laughs> sometimes people who produce just um, phone cases. Yeah. Yeah. And they have some problems in the Wallets. Chinese production or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? So a, a lot of different kind of. Yeah. And also um, all this um Crazy leathers, what we have. So, from yeah, we got like all this exotic, exotic, and exotic leathers. Exotic leathers. Right? So we <laughs> have. Uh, I mean, this we, is I mean a there was that lives there was a, there was th- there was an email <laughs> that we received roughly about a month ago where someone had a footstool made out of an actual physical elephant leg. Oh my gosh! All right. I mean, <laughs> gross to a certain degree for some people. I can completely understand that. So but somebody's very offended, right? Yeah. But at the same time, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm it's. At the same time, for us, it's real leather. It is. It is real stuff, and something that we've got to look yeah. l- look after. Well, so we can't help that elephant now, but we can at least help this. <laughs> e- exactly right. Yeah. So, so stuff like that it goes into the uh, goes into the leather dictionary that we've put together. You know, and that the the English version is something that I was part of to sort of translate and you, you know translate sort of, uh, everything, take everything, yeah, which yeah. took a lot of time. Yeah, you know, was a, yeah. Uh, but what we've got Great now is is a wealth of information well, and um, yeah so but um, that is something what so also to call us to send an email everything is free of charge yeah yeah we okay, always cool. with we are happy when we can help people and uh, send yeah. any question about yeah. leather vinyl plastic and that's that's we how we are to help. Yeah. and that's yeah. one of the things that your dad always talks about uh, uh, Dane is yeah you do the education same education yeah. first I love on the right yeah. company education first yeah the sales yeah. aren't important as long as we are educating because that'll come folks. right that'll yeah. come if you, do the, come if you do if, if you look educated. after customers if you educate yep. them yeah. if, you, if you share your knowledge yeah all of the other things are become a byproduct and they just come yeah. eventually. Y- yep. You may not get everyone, but you'll also get people when those educated people speak to other people exactly. and educate them yeah. and it just perpetuates. Yeah. And next thing you know, you have people who've never spoken to you before, but they go, I've heard about this. Can you explain a little bit more? And then it's a chance to educate yeah. some more. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's yeah. really great comes back around. Yeah, and I, I, you know, we, we both do it <clears throat> as well as, you know, all the guys in the company. So, you know, I've seen large reply to messages on Facebook and Instagram late at night. I do the same, yeah. you know, and we just, you know, that's something that we, we really uh, have made it a part of ourselves. And yeah. And something that we're yeah. yeah, but this is something what really makes fun. Yeah. 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 It's really, it's not feeling like work. Right. You know? yeah. So yeah. it is uh, just a good thing and um, well, makes and fun. And it's always that what I hope that I can get from Companies, companies when, yeah, I'm, yeah, when you're exactly. involved yeah. Yeah. yeah so and <laughs> yeah we joke because uh, my wife's like what are you doing and i said i'm uh, just responding to this customer she's like <laughs> that it's 11 30 at night, night. night. And I, I, think, I thought you were looking at facebook I think, and i was like well i was but they sent me a message <laughs> <laughs> they saw i was on there. every wife uh, <laughs> you know? yeah 
has <laughs> that has that question in their sort yeah, of customer. Uh, right. yeah. 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 Exactly right. Yeah. Is that what you call you it? Got yeah. it? Especially yeah. if it's a lady customer. Leave that phone things get even more complicated. Check it later. <laughs> yeah, <that's> like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's but that's we all like most people don't realize, but we're all technically still on the clock twenty four hours a day. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Like, that's what it works Dane sends us stuff from Reddit at one in the morning when he's still awake and he's like did you guys see this customer need you to reply to him I was like <laughs> I'm up late no I didn't I'm asleep and, and now I'm awake they know if I don't send it as soon as I see it I might forget it yeah my funny dad enough might that have happens that to me that, that, that happens to me as well that, I just sort of almost get paranoid but like oh I'm gonna forget I'm gonna forget the gears are turning I care about this right now let me just let me do it get he it just out puts there, it out and there. That's and it. then Anthony and I in the morning will get yeah, to it yeah and then you follow up they yeah, understand they, they've gotten used to it. Yeah, <laughs> but so. it's a system. well, cool. Well, let's go get some food. Yeah, all That's right, it. we're hungry, yeah. right? All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. If you're here on the Rag Company podcast YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe to us and follow us on Spotify. If you use Spotify, we find or Stitcher. That it's really good. Stitcher, uh, the Apple Podcast app, wherever you find podcasts. Hopefully, we're there. And if we're not. Let us know so that we can be on that platform too. Yep. And make sure you leave a review on uh, on iTunes. Yes, uh, always we love very that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, leave us uh, a comment down below. What uh, what what you think about leather care? Like, what's what's your input? What's your experience? Just curious to hear what people yeah. have to say about Good leather stuff. care. Good, bad, whatever. Yeah. All right, guys. Till next time. Adios. See ya. Yeah. Thank you.